Thank you so much for all the wonderful blessings and beautiful comments yes. and kind words and prayers for our 46th wedding anniversary. And we just thank you so much for that. We're here. We're the officially the frozen chosen. I think it's 26 degrees out and everything's iced over. And uh, so that's what we're here for. Actually, today is our 46th wedding anniversary. And so a lot of the questions people have is how do, how do people stay married 46 years? And so let's I've got an idea. What what do you think the number one thing is for all of our family that's watching? What and those of you that aren't married that are potentially going to marry somebody, but what what advice would you give them? Um well if you're a believer and all of you guys are for the most part, um, you just really need to hear from the Lord. If you really, if you really seek the Lord, he will tell you. And you'll know deep within your heart and deep within your spirit that that's who you're called to for the rest of your life. And that's how they I, I believe that's how it, it holds together so many years because you really love each other. God gives you a love for each other, even if you're very, very different. And uh, and then he holds you together because you're being obedient to him to follow after the word. Mm -hmm. If you're not a believer, uh, I think. God has birthed you out of his womb of love in the first place. And you probably have a real sense of, of a heart knowing that this person is for you. And it's not just a fleshly thing, but it's really something that you know deep down inside. So uh, either way, the Lord wants to protect you from getting involved in marriages that are going to break your heart and break your family up if it's not really his perfect will for you. Because the best is when God has ordained it even if you don't realize it. Yeah. And and I would add to that is I think I think you have to discover the call of God on the family's life because the reason he brings in strength and weaknesses in couples is to have 1 plus mm -hmm. 1 equals 1. Mm -hmm. And so what he does is he actually ultimately brings people together for two reasons. Number 1 to answer the call, but also number 2 to have children come that are arrows in your quiver that are actually going to facilitate the legacy of that call. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, that's really how it works. And, and tonight, you know, we want to talk about a little bit of preparation for Purim. Purim's coming up here toward the end of the month. And, you know, and also I want to invite you, I'll have uh, my moderator that's watching, Megan and the team put together this story. And, and if you know the Purim story and you read the book of Esther, it is not a PG story uh, for the children that watch. I mean, you've got um, all sorts of stuff that happens. And um, and Megan Marcelino, our daughter, did a beautiful job with the team and with Marissa and some of the others. And they put together this story. And I want you to be able to download it for free. And it's really well done. And you know what I like about children's stories is that it's also very good for adults <laughs> because it explains the story. But we basically put this together for our kids and our Covenant Academy. And anyway, I want you to get this. If you're grandparents, this is a great way for you to be able to download this. I know that uh, next week, or uh, I guess this week, I'll be going and reading this to our the 25th, I'll be reading this at, with our Kevin Academy with our kids there. But this is a great download, so you can see the uh, the download there and uh, go ahead and get a free download of this. Share it whoever you want. You know, I mean, I've got, you know, you've got a, a children's, you know, Bible study. It, it's a great thing. But I want to go ahead and get started tonight. And thank you really again. But I, I'm going to turn right here and uh, let me uh, let me move this. I need to move this right here. I want you to see this because this is this is where we're going tonight, and uh, and here's what I want you to know. What and both of us, what we want you to know is this. I, I did a little clock here. It's critical right now that you have that Issachar anointing that you know what time it is. Okay, the, the, these are critical times, and what Purim is. Purim is really the preparatory time before Passover. In, in God's calendar, okay? So what I want you to know is to know what time it is. And then I put a little compass here. And what I want you to see is 
Where do you sail your boat or where do you climb your mountain? What direction do you need to be pointed? See, it's important that you know what time it is. It's important that you know what direction that you go because that's when you feel his love. And, and, and the key is, is the love, the love of God is really an experience. It's not <clears throat> just like reading his word and you can see where he, he expresses his love through covenants, promises, and oaths. You can see his love that's expressed through, you know, historical uh, prophetic stories and Jesus's parables, all that. And seeing it is one thing, but you need to actually experience it. And, uh, you know, you know, and Christy, you know, has these experiences quite a bit where, where you'll read, read the word and then the Lord will give you something and you're actually feeling the presence and the love of the father, but then you'll go and pick up another book and, and just flip it open. And then there's, so tell people a little bit about experiencing the love of God and the presence of God in modern times. So because that's where I want to take you, because if you're really going to find the call and the purpose for your life, uh, this is a great season right now. This is a quiet time. This is a time where, where the Lord is really visiting. So kind of share how that works in your life, just as a testimony. I'm not saying you have to do it this way. I do it a little different than she does, but it doesn't matter. We still arrive at the same place where the experiencing of the outpouring of the love of the Holy Spirit into our physical bodies, whether we're here in my office here at the house, she she has a prayer room in upstairs at our house. So we have separate spaces and that's what the Lord's provided. There was years we didn't have any spaces like that, but it's important to be able to have a place where you have that meeting place, that prayer closet. So share a little bit how that works, works for you and, and why is it important in your walk? Um. Well, to have the same place because there's a familiarity about it. And uh, and I think the Lord loves meeting you in the same place. I mean, that's a place that you come. It's just that. going to be the two, just you and the Lord. And uh, so it, it just it becomes very, very comfortable. And I think just like with the House of David, and if, if you have been there before, you recognize that there is a, a, a tangible presence before the service starts, before any of the people get there. People come in early and they are going, Wow, there is such a presence of the Lord here. They feel it. Sometimes, mm -hmm. sometimes they feel it on the property before they even get out of their cars. They drive in and there's such a strong presence. So it's kind of you build that up. There's a residue. There's That's a, right. a residue of the Lord. So so you go in there and uh and then you just uh, I, I shared something Friday night that I know is the Lord. It was the Lord speaking it uh, through um, two ladies from like a hundred, literally a hundred years ago, almost a hundred years ago. And his, his heart cry was that, that we would come to him, not because, not only because we wanted to be able to be taught something or not only because we needed to hear from him in regards to something, uh, but that we would come just to sit silently before him to love him. Yeah. And so I've tried, I've been trying particularly hard this, this year to just come in and sit without any questions, without any desires, with the exception of just being close to him, just loving on him. And what was amazing in this word was what that he had said, if you have, uh, if you have already in your spirit and have experienced it before, uh, the love of the Father and just wanting to be loved for who you are as a human being. He said, you don't just get that by yourself. He says, that is the heart desire of the Father. The God, the one and true living God has that same desire. So that's why we have it. It's because we want to be loved just because we are loved for who we are unconditionally. And that's what God loves. So my, my counsel would be to just go sit down and sit quietly and listen to him if he's got something to say. And if he doesn't have anything to say, you're gonna to begin to feel his presence in the room. You're gonna be able to begin to feel him close and, and the presence and, and the, the radiance of his glory comes. And so you just, you're just quiet before him. And then he can direct you. I am a person that has always just opened the word up and wherever my eyes land on whichever side of the page it is, whichever page it is, I began to read because that's how he's instructed me. He just go get the book, just go get the Bible, open it up and I'll speak to you. So that's what I do. And, and even from my very beginning of my walk, it was, I would do that. And then that day 
I would always have an experience that I needed to be able to fall back on what I had read in the word that morning. And it, it never failed. It never failed. And it's still the same way. He just feeds me. That's the way he feeds me. So he'll tell me, get the Bible out, open the Bible. I open the Bible wherever my land, my eyes land, I read it. And it's like, okay, this is what's happening today. I mean, today I had that kind of experience. And then he would tell me, go get another book and I go get the other book and I just open it up wherever. And, and it was following the same line, the same vein of what he had been telling me in the Bible. And they said, go get another devotional. And I go pick up the devotional and I flip it open and there it was. Or flip about the day's timing in the devotional and it was exactly what he'd been giving me in the books before you know that morning so it's it's just it's incredible and when that happens you just you know your heart is just so filled that he sees you that he cares and with all that he's got all the people that he's got to take care of um he still is right there with you while you're doing your bible study and while you're spending time with him yes and you know uh, our assignment tonight is how do i discover god's plan for my life how do I do that? And really the key is right over here. We need to get you to a place where you know the time you can see the direction and find his love. There has to be a time where you soak in the presence of his love. So anyway, I just got a text and, and uh, for our podcast and charisma podcast partners that are listening, you're going, I want that Purim story for my kids. And you know, you really want it for you. So listen, we know that you still watch cartoons occasionally on Saturday. It's okay. You can go ahead in the comments and say, yes, I'm, I'm 50, 60, 40 years old. And I still watch cartoons. This, this book is fabulous. You're going to love it. So go to clmmin.com forward slash Purim. P-U-R-I-M. So that's C-L-M-M-I-N dot com forward slash Purim. And you can download your free Purim story and uh, written by Megan Marcelino and the Ark Words done by Marissa and others in our staff. They always do such a great job with all the books and the manuals. And I want to give them a shout out. Thank you for yes, sharing you your for gift. And, and this is a great story yes. of Purim. So I'm going to give you just a brief one minute before I go into my board and we go into the Acts teaching. Number one in Purim is this. You have a king. He has the Jews marked. They're marked for death. Okay. There is the king has decided that, guess what? We're going to exterminate the Jewish people. We're going to mark all of them. We're going to find out who they are, put a mark on them, and, and we're going to uh, exterminate them. So that's the story of Purim. But what happens is now the king is having a festival. And when he does, Queen Vashti, she decides she's going to have attitude. She's not going to show up. The king calls and the queen doesn't show up. So he says, guess what? I've got to, so to say, elect another queen. I've got to get one. So now in the midst of this political fighting of no division between king and queen, it opens a door for someone named Hadassah or Esther. And, and meanwhile, a prophet, Mordecai, the uncle, the older Jew, generational, the father and the children following Esther, following Mordecai. So now what happens is Mordecai gets a download of, guess what? They're marking us. They're going to destroy us. But God's given me a plan. And he goes to Esther and it starts right here. And Christy's going to go ahead and read. So see, he marks them for death. And, and, uh, and the guy that's in charge of this is Haman. And Haman's name means, means noise or noisy tumult. It's just a lot of confusion. Let, can I call it mental media manipulation? Yeah. So Haman's all talk and no delivery. But he's planning on taking out all the Jews. He's, he's so to say, the Hitler in this story. And what happens is Mordecai is the one that discovers the plan. But Mordecai also gets the download and he gives it to his adopted niece, which she's in her teens, and this is Esther. And Esther makes a decision because she, she's been preparing and, and she has to prepare more, but she's letting the values of her life drive to action. I can't tell you how important that is, character, values, principles in your life. When God gets ready to use people, he looks to those things. So Mordecai sees this in Esther, and so we're going to go into our book. Of, we're going to go into our Acts teaching, A, okay? We're going to go into his apply, C, change, T is transform. And if you're new here, A, C, T, apply, change, and transform. 
That's what we do twice a week here at Kurt Landry Ministries. I'm telling you, if you just simply do this, it's kind of like uh, uh, if, 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 I, if we were in a weight room, you know, you can't go and lift 250 pounds the first time you come into the gym. You kind of have to build up to it. You have to crawl, walk, run. So the scripture we're going to apply today is out of the book of Esther 4 and 14. And I'm going to give you one answer right here. And then you can put it in the comments to say that you will do it. So Christy's going to read this, the book of Esther 4 and 14. Okay. Let's start some 13. And Mordecai told them to yeah, answer. Yeah, you can start. Esther. That's fine. And Mordecai told them to answer Esther. Do not think in your heart that you will escape in the king's palace any more than all the other Jews. For if you remain completely silent at this time, relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews from another place. But you and your father's house will perish. Yet who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. So I want to say this to all of you. And, and for all of us that were believing for uh, Trump and the Trump administration to get in, you know, and of course we're all disappointed, but here's the key is that's because that's what we were believing for. But you need to understand with God, God's deliverance of the United States of America to be the foundational gospel preaching nation to all the nations of the earth and to stand with Israel in its most prophetic season of time is not contingent upon whether Donald Trump is in, Joe Biden, or it doesn't make any difference if I was president. It doesn't make any difference that God's plans are going forward and God sees, he knows the time, he sees the direction and he wants you to feel the love and the faith to know, guess what? The best is yet to come because a lot of times things just don't go the way we think. Think about being the disciples when they didn't understand Jesus was going to be crucified. They were all thinking about a literal kingdom coming, overtaking their enemies, the Romans, and yet here he is brutally murdered by them, shows no resistance, calls down no angels, but yet it was the biggest victory for the world and we're still enjoying that victory today. So what is the key to Esther right here is you've got to answer the call. So go ahead and go in the comments if you can and say, I will answer my call. That's what Christy and I really have determined that us answering the call, that's why we're still married after 46 years. Because every time we can agree as a family, touching anything, answering the call, that's when the peace and the provision and the protection comes. Okay, C, what do you have to change in your life? When you say, yes, Lord, I'm gonna answer the call, what do you change? You go to Proverbs chapter 23, verse seven. Proverbs chapter 23, verse seven. For as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. So what is the key with change? You have to think differently of yourself. See, Esther had to start going from little Hadassah Esther to Queen Esther. And so that was that preparatory period where she went into training, she went into the anointing. But what happened is letting her life values drive her actions she said yes, and then after she said yes, she had to think differently, and guess what? She had to make new friends. She had to get, become friends with and spend time with those who were preparing her to be the queen. So that's the second thing. T is transformation. If we're gonna transform, have transformation, we're gonna go to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, 31 and 32. For if we would judge <laughs> ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord that we may not be condemned with the world. So the key is if you want transformation, you have to examine yourself. When you don't take time to examine yourself, forgive yourself, forgive others, repent and turn from your wicked ways. When you don't do those things, then consequences judge you, circumstances judge you. So what Esther had to do is she had to let her life values drive her to say, yes, Lord, change the way she thinks about herself as a little girl, but as a queen, make friends with those who prepared her to be a queen. She constantly examined herself, purified her motives, because why do we know that? Because in this story, we know that she called for a fast. Not only did she fast, but she called for all the Jews, please, let's fast, let's come in agreement. And what is fasting? It's a time when we have to examine ourselves. 
And now we're going to close with Jude chapter 1 and 21. And this is the key and the power of this hour right now. This is a key word. I want you to pay attention. We just got a few more minutes. We want to thank you for joining us on the podcast. We want to thank you for all the home groups of House of David that are watching this. We love and, and bless you, and I hope you drive safe. We actually went out on the roads for a little bit this afternoon. It wasn't near as bad as we thought, but still, you must be safe and careful. But here is the key to Esther's success. She loved, she loved Mordecai and she listened. She loved the Jewish people and she listened. And she loved the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And she listened and she obeyed. But listen to this scripture. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. So that's the key. And I'm going to have Christy pray for us. But I just want to do a, a brief review. Purim is a time of a Hebrew, it means lots. A lot of times people say, I don't like the lot that I chose. A lot, like when they, like a flipping of a coin or uh, where things may fall for you. It doesn't make any difference in Purim what lot falls to you. To the Jews at Purim, the lot was that the Persians wanted to mark the Jews and kill them. No different than what's happening today. So guess what? Haman was just noisy. He was a tumult. He was making a bunch of accusations. He was canceling, cussing and cursing. But guess what? Mordecai said, I discovered his plan. He gets a download from the Lord, and that includes his adoptive daughter, Esther, and says, Esther, guess what? Deliverance is going to come through you. You're going to become the queen. Listen, the king and the queen aren't getting along. There's political mess. They all thought everything was going to go great. They got it all aligned, and they started fighting amongst themselves. Guess what? In the middle of the fighting, I'm going to slip you in. If you'll prepare yourself, little Esther, you are beautiful enough. There's a call of God on your life, and I'm going to put you in a position of power. And when you do, God's going to release a plan, and it's going to save the nation and all the nations. And even the Persian nation got blessed because when God brings deliverance, the, the rain of, of blessing falls on the just and the unjust alike. So Esther, in Esther 4.14, she said, yes, deliverance can come through me. She went to Proverbs 2, 3, uh, uh, 23 and 7 and said, I've got to think differently. I've got to think like a queen. I've got to make friends with these that will prepare me to be the queen. And she went to 1 Corinthians 11.31, so to say, in the principle in 32. She said, I better examine myself. Let's call a fast. All fast, all the Jews fast. Let's examine our heart because it's the issues of the heart. But in Jude 1 and 21, if I keep in love and I put myself down because she even had to make a decision, even if I perish, I'm going to do this because doing what right, what's right is even if it causes you to perish is always worth it for God. Mm -hmm. She made those decisions and you can make that decision now. So let's agree in prayer. And I want to give you one more time. If you want the our, our children's book on Esther, go to clmmin.com forward slash Purim, P-U-R-I-M forward slash Purim. And uh, Christy's going to pray for us right now. Just pray for the people. So, Father, we give you praise and we give you thanksgiving that your love is really true. It's a real love. It's an unconditional love. And we thank you that this day, all of your righteous ones are receiving that love and they are believing it and they are embracing it no matter what lies the enemy may speak against it that they are going to be quick to recognize this does not line up with the word of god and if it doesn't line up with the word of god the enemy is speaking to you and he's lying to you and trying to deceive you because he is the father of lies so father we just thank you that in this period when things are very challenging and and sometimes extremely difficult and there have been losses and there's been fear and doubt and unbelief yes. about everything that's happening. It's the same situation I'm sure that that Esther was experiencing with all of these things coming and uh, she had to she had to know what she had to do and she needed someone to confer with her and it was Mordecai and she trusted him and she decided that she was going to be obedient. So Lord, you've given us a 
huge book full of instruction wrapped in your love. And so we thank you that when we are needy, we can go to the word and you will speak to us through that word. It won't necessarily be an audible voice, but you will speak. So we just praise you and thank you that your people are going to run to the word to find out what it is that you are speaking to them when they get in situations that are challenging them, Lord. We thank you and we give you praise that just as Esther did, she chose to walk in wisdom. She chose to lay her down, her life down as a sacrifice sacrifice if necessary, trusting in God, trusting in what Mordecai told her. And that's what we are asking you, Father, in these days of challenge, in these days of fear, in these days of so much chaos, we are asking you to reveal your perfect will and give us God's courage to be able to wage war in this battle and in all of these challenges. And Lord, I will have one more thing to speak to you in to, to the people in regards to forgiving yourself how the enemy tricks us to believe that we've done something so bad that cannot be forgiven or that we are inadequate or that we can't. And we allow those thoughts to stay. And Lord, we, we don't even think sometimes about forgiving ourselves. But I, I believe that you need to verbally say, I forgive myself and get that enemy off of your back and out of your ears and out of your heart because the moment you choose to forgive yourself, Rabbi's got a beautiful testimony about forgiving oneself. The Lord told him you have to forgive yourself. And so I just would counsel and recommend and in prayer, allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you when you need to forgive yourself so that you can be set free totally and clean and clean cleaned because you are walking in freedom, not harboring anger towards yourself. And we give you praise, Lord. We give you thanksgiving for it. In Yeshua's name. In Yeshua's name. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. So go to clmmin.com forward slash Purim, P-U-R-I-M, and download your free children's book of the story of Purim. Also, it is our custom, biblically, to give gifts to the poor. This is a time where we give alms. We celebrate our deliverance and we give alms to the poor. Mm -hmm. We will sponsor Purim parties for our soldiers and Purim parties for our Holocaust survivors. And if you would like to sow a seed into that, you can go to clmmin.com forward slash donate. clmmin.com forward slash donate. And you can donate and help us to be able to bring those alms and bring those gifts to the poor and bless Israel. Remember the scripture says, I will bless those who bless you, Israel, and you're doing it and they need it right now more than they need the help and they do need the help and they need the gifts, but they most of all, they need your love. So when our team shows up and then we have these Purim parties and we bring in and help them to have music and food and cakes and cookies and, and small gifts, and most of all, chocolates, <laughs> they like chocolate. And when we bring these in, and it says from you, our heroes, you. Kurt Landry Ministry Partners and House of David, my olive tree, what that's saying is we Thank love you. you and we care you. And the biggest thing is you're not alone. We haven't forgotten. That's a Purim blessing. God bless you. Thank you, Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. God bless. God bless.